Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Coffee with Carrie. Reporting, <laughs> reporting on day five of the brown rice diet. Uh, I'm feeling spacey today. Um, but yeah, let's talk about day five, which was yesterday. I woke up feeling good, energized. I moved my entire bungalow. So I went from one to another with no caffeine, feeling amazing, really, really good. <laughs> Today, not so clearly. Um, yeah, no, I felt, I felt good. And, and then I had caffeine. I'm telling you this for a reason, okay? Um, as I've explained before, the whole point of the brown rice diet is to have only that. And when you bring other substances into the diet, then you are creating variations and fluctuations in the mind, which doesn't help the immune system. So when you're using the brown rice diet to heal something serious, or something um, that you've had long term, then this is not going to assist that process. And caffeine is probably one of the worst things that you can have. I'm sorry, I forgot my microphone today, so apologies for the wind. Not feeling my best. Okay, it's good. Um, yeah, so caffeine is probably one of the worst things you can have. Now, I've done the 10 days before and I've done various shorter periods of time. So I know the, the feelings of the brown rice diet and I know the effects. And the reason I was doing it this time is not because of a severe illness. It's because I'm just really helping my body to try and detox. Obviously not the caffeine. So I made a conscious choice to, to keep that present whilst I was still needing to have a lot of mental function and alertness. But I didn't want to wait for the, for the, the rest, the body detox for everything else. So that's why I kept it there. But then yesterday um, was that, that was it. No more. And by God am I feeling it today. But yesterday I did feel really good and actually I did struggle last night very much in that it was the first time I really, really, really wanted other food. I was actually reading a book in the story, the woman was eating a packed lunch and they described she was, how she was eating a baguette filled with ham and cheese and that was it. <laughs> I spent the next hour dreaming of a baguette with ham, cheese and mayonnaise. So yeah, I nearly, no, I didn't nearly break because it was like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. But yeah, my thoughts went wild for other food and that's the first time it's happened in five days. Today, no caffeine, but even when I woke up, like this is what I know the brown rice diet to feel like, really just, and you can probably tell, I'm not so animated today, right? And I am squinting as well, sorry. So either that or sunglasses, what do you want? Um, yeah, this is how I know the brown rice diet to be, really stilling you, mind, body. This is what you'll get if you do it. Even today I've not had many urges for alternative food, but last night I did struggle. But the way to deal with that is to just go down into those emotions, into those desires, into the feelings that you're experiencing at that time, because it's the mind that wants all of this alternative stuff. It's the mind that desires variation. It's the mind that desires flavor. It's the mind that desires the sugars and the preservatives. The body doesn't. Like my body has everything it needs right now. It's got all of the proteins it needs. It's got all of the 
well, probably not all the vitamins it needs. I mean, I couldn't last too long on this, but you know, it, it, it's functioning. If I really needed to or wanted to, I could run, oh, hang on, no, yeah, I could run the length of this beach. Now, I'm incredibly grateful that I don't need to, and I certainly don't want to, so I won't. But I could, you know, my body has what it needs. So, yeah, where does this need or where does this desire, where does this urge come from? And it's the mind. Again, we're, we're, we're using food as distraction, using it to mask something. What are we masking? What are we distracting ourselves from? And it's the true emotions that are underneath. So by removing all of these options and sitting with the feeling of desire, the feeling of urges, when when you can't satisfy them, they have to pass, they turn into something else and then you can get to see what's underneath, what's driving them. So it's a very interesting experience. I'm sure I'll get to experience it more and I'll report back. Um, but last night's was No, they, they were really short. I didn't even notice anything underneath them. But I have had an incredibly emotional morning actually today. So I'm wondering if they're coming out now, you know? Lots of anger, lots of sorrow today. But I'll report on this tomorrow when I've got my full day to, to give you information on. I'm not really animated. I'm not. I feel fine. Like I just have no enthusiasm. I don't feel bad. I've got oh, I've got a really bad headache from the caffeine withdrawal, and that's fine because this is what I want. I I want to be off the caffeine now. I've got no need to uh, have mental functioning clarity. Uh, <laughs> I don't have to do any work, so now's the time to really drop into the purpose behind the brown rice diet and have that full healing and interestingly whenever I've done um, this detox I've given up caffeine immediately this is the only time actually that I've uh, carried it on for a couple of days and I've never had a problem with giving it up whilst doing this detox I've never suffered withdrawal symptoms I've never never longed for it during eat no that's a lie no I have no, I've definitely longed for it, but I've, I've not had it. And interestingly enough as well, I've not brought coffee back into my diet for a good few weeks after I've finished the detox. I actually find that it's the easiest way to give up caffeine if and when I need to. So there's a food for thought, isn't it? Or a drink for thought. So if you're trying to give up caffeine, maybe you want to give this... A no, I'm not a doctor. Don't follow my advice. Absolutely not. Don't even follow my example. Do everything because you want to and you want to try. Um, so yeah, I will sit and welcome the headaches and I will see what that withdrawal brings as well because underneath that there is also lots and lots of layers. Remember I talked about that in my first ever Coffee for Carrie, about the time when I gave up coffee and underneath I found so much anger and then beneath that I found so much understanding that I use coffee to keep me going, keep me going, keep me going because if I can produce more, if I can do more then I become more, then I am more and then maybe you'll love me if I don't drink coffee then I'm not enough I'm not enough for you and I'm not enough for anybody else I'm not worthy enough to be loved all from just not drinking coffee for a couple of days <gasps> what a revelation anyway I'll leave you with that thought so tomorrow I will report on day six who knows, maybe I'll have a little bit of oomph Maybe I won't. Anyway, love ya. Mwah.